Hey guys, Jeff here with Passive Income Unlocked. So in a previous video series, I walked you through finding topics within a niche and then keywords within those topics. In this video, which is going to be an extension of those first two videos, I'm going to show you how we gauge the competitiveness of keywords to decide which ones we want to go after. So if you missed those first two videos, I do recommend you watch those before watching this one. Um, so I will put a link in the description below. Basically what I'm going to do in this video, we're going to jump over to my computer in a minute here. I'm going to walk you through a ton of different examples, show you why I would go after a keyword or why I wouldn't go after a keyword. Um, but before we do that, I just want to really quickly go over some of the things that I look for when I'm gauging competition. Um, so number one, are the search results relevant to the search query? So when you type in a search, are the titles that show up, are those actually relevant to what you typed in? Are they just kind of close? Are they completely off? All things you want to keep in mind. Um, what is the search intent? So is the searcher looking to buy a product? Are they just looking to answer a question? And so on. Um, number three, what type of results are being shown by Google? So are they showing mostly video results, like a video widget? Are they showing an image carousel, um, a featured snippet, double featured snippet? So things to keep in the back of your mind. Um, number four, is Google showing sites in the YMYL category? So that's your money or your life. So sites like maybe WebMD or Healthline, you start seeing um, health sites like that show up or finance sites, things like that, you might want to stay away. Um, number five, how authoritative are the competing articles or the competing sites producing those articles? Um, that's going to be dependent on the niche. Um, but if you're, let's say, I think I've used this example before, if you're in the bicycling niche, you don't want to be competing with bicycling.com for a search term. Um, number six, does a featured snippet already answer the search question uh, well enough to where no one's going to click on your article? So if the question is something like, how much does an NBA basketball weigh? Or how do you convert pounds to ounces? No one's going to click those links to click through the article, or very, very few people anyways, so just stay away from those keywords. Um, and the last one, number seven, how long and thorough, and thorough being the keyword here, are the competing articles? So it's not really all about word count, it's just how how detailed, how thorough, how on point are the competing articles for that search term. And we'll, and we'll look at that in a little bit. So those are some of the factors that I look at. Um, last thing I'll point out before we jump over my computer here, um, the only tool that I use is called, it's a, an extension for Chrome called Word Counter Plus. I'll show you that in a second here. Um, that just gives you word count and that is free. Um, I don't use Mozbar or anything else to kind of gauge the number of links or authority uh, of a site or of an article or anything like that. Um, and those tools are good. Um, they're useful and everything. But the reason that I don't use those is that I have found that even with brand new sites, we've been able to outrank um, articles that have links pointing at them, even though our articles have zero links pointing at them. So links are not the only ranking factor. Um, and if using a tool like that is going to prevent you from going after some of these keywords, it's better to just not use the tool. So what I do instead is I base it off a of feel. Um, if I'm spending enough time within a niche doing keyword research, um, competition analysis, I'm going to kind of figure out which sites I need to stay away from, the ones that are kind of the authority sites in that niche. So that's actually how I gauge it instead. So, all right, so that's probably enough talk. So let's jump over my computer, go through some examples. All right, guys. So when I said early on that we're going to be going through some examples, I definitely meant it. Um, so all these tabs cross top here, those are the keywords we're going to take a look at. Um, this covers two different niches. Um, one is the facial hair niche, so like beards, mustaches, things like that. Um, the second one we'll go over is re related to resistance training, so like using a resistance band. Um, before we jump into those real quick here, so this is the tool that I mentioned before, um, Word Counter Plus, it's a Chrome extension. Um, so if you want to use this, it's a free tool. Just go to Google, do a search for Word Counter Plus. Um, when you open that up, it's going to pop up this uh, screen here. You'll have a button up here that says um, probably download, then install, and so on. So you install that, and you'll see it up here in the corner. Um, and I'll show you how to use that in just a minute here. So let's just jump right in. Um, I have some notes in front of me because I try to cover a bunch of different keywords, different types of keywords, um, different situations. So I'm going to refer to my new, uh, notes throughout just to try to make sure I don't miss anything here. Um, so, all right, first one, how to curl your mustache without wax. So this is a search term here. So as we kind of scroll down, the first thing I always do is I kind of look at the titles. So how to curl your mustache from WikiHow. That's the first one. Um, one thing you'll notice that Google does a lot now is they highlight um, words that are kind of match the words in your search here. That's kind of basically how they determined, at least that's the way I look at it. This is how they determined that this was a relevant search. 
Um, but as you actually look at the highlighted words here, or the bolded words, you'll see start by rubbing the wax into your mustache. Um, the search term is here, how to curl your mustache without wax. So this is not on point. Um, then you scroll down, you got a little bit, a bit of a video section here, so something to keep in mind. Um, then how to grow a handlebar mustache. So again, if you look at the bolded text, uh, apply some wax. Again, that doesn't, that's not on point with this. Um, this one has nothing about wax. This one, waxing your mustache. How to use mustache wax. Apply mustache wax, and so on. So in this case here, there's nothing that's on point. Um, so this is one that we would definitely target. Um, and just to show you, so let's say that this article was on point. It's not, um, at least based on the title, it's not. But assuming this article is not on point, but we'll pretend that it is, what we would do in this case is we would open it up, a new tab. You would highlight all the text within the article, or at least all the relevant text. It's actually a pretty short article here. You just highlight it like this. You right click. And then if you installed that um, Chrome extension, Word Counter Plus, you just click on that. And it's going to pop up and tell you the word count. So 800 words. So basically what that tells me is I need to write an article that's at least 800 words, ideally more. So I'd shoot for at least 1,000, maybe 1,200 in this case. Um, again, that's assuming that this article was on point. It wasn't on point. So in that case, what we end up doing um, is we would probably produce a 1,000-word um, article. Um, you can get away with less than that. I've written several 500 word articles myself, quite a few of them actually, um, that have ranked number one, probably still do today. Um, and that was an experiment and it, it was definitely a successful one. Um, but these days we tend to go higher. Um, we're not trying to pinch pennies or anything. So it's for us, like we're just gonna put the minimum at a thousand if we're outsourcing and that's fine. Um, but if you're writing the articles yourself and you find some keywords that literally have no competition, you can probably go less than that and it's not really a big deal. Um, the key really is to just stay on point as much as possible. It's not really about the words anyways. It's about staying on point. Um, the reason that longer articles tend to do better, or at least this is my theory, is that you tend to write more about that topic. Um, but you can beat longer articles with shorter articles if your article is more focused and doesn't go off on tangents. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so the next one here. So how to trim beard without mess. So let me go back to page one here because I'm on page two. So first result that you see here, so it's from Esquire. So that's a big, big site, obviously. How to never deal with beard trimmings all over the sink. Um, the second one that you see here is from Reddit. So a lot of people, if they see Reddit um, or a forum or Quora or Stack Exchange, uh, something like that show up this high in the search results, they're just going after it immediately. Um, but that's not necessarily a good idea. So, and I'll show you why. So if you kind of scroll down, so five clever ways to minimize the beard trimming mess. This is on, on point from beardresource.com. You have a video, a large video section here that's taken up a huge chunk of the, the page. Um, how to trim your beard without making a mess from another big site. So huffpost.com. Um, my quarantine beard trimmings are everywhere. How to trim beard effectively, not mess up. This one is not on point. Um, how to trim your beard without getting those little hairs all over the place, basically, is what this one's saying. Um, and so on. So what you'll see, actually, we'll go on to page two. As we go on to page two, then you got a huge chunk of videos here. Then you got a Stack Exchange result, which, again, like you would typically say Stack Exchange, Reddit, you would say, okay, I can, I can beat these sites. But then you have GQ here. Um, see how to trim your beard without making a mess so this is somewhere in the article here from gq that's a site you're probably not going to want to compete with um shaving your head and beard without the mess how to shave without get shave without getting hair everywhere so you get the point so even though reddit was the number two result i wouldn't go after this um there's too many sites that are on point from too many especially very very large sites um large authority sites so this is one that i would actually avoid even though there are a couple of search terms or search results from uh, Reddit and Stack Exchange that you would typically be able to beat. So just something to keep in mind. So next one, how to shave beard without clogging sink. All right, so let me just see what I wrote down here for this one. Okay, so for this one, all I want to show you was this is just a, this is a completely different uh, search term. So how to shave beard without clogging sink, how to trim beard without mess. What I want to point out is a lot of times you might have a search term that seems different, but the meaning is very, very similar and Google is going to end up showing similar results. Um, so don't just think um, like back in the day, 
you could put specific words like clogging sink in here and you could rank higher than somebody else that's putting that's you know trying to rank for this one over here whereas nowadays um, Google can figure out the intent figure out what the articles are about and they'll show the same results for both of them so there's something to keep in mind if you look at the results here you're gonna see um, some of the same results for both terms um, if you put without clogging sync in your search term you probably have a better chance of ranking for this one um, but my point is it's similar enough to this one where you're kind of competing for this against the same people no matter which way you go all right so the next one how to remove mustache without shaving all right so what I wanted to point out in this one here so the first result is from uh, medical news today so if you're not familiar with that site it's a very large medical site second result and third result this is something that I've been seeing a lot from I don't know how long this has been going on but from Google where they'll show um, results from the same site and they'll just indent the second result because um, I think for a while there they stopped allowing the same site to show up on on the same page but anyway so you got the first second and third result from medical news today and then Healthline. Um, you got WikiHow down here so I don't even need to look at the titles in this case. Um, just seeing these YMYL sites show up as search results. If, if Google is saying they're going to show these types of results, these types of sites for this search term, that's telling me that I probably want to stay away from it and I'll just move on. I don't even care if these are not on point. I'm not going to compete with uh, Medical News Today and I'm not competing with Healthline for sure or WebMD or any of those types of sites. So next one, how to grow a beard without looking homeless. So the first thing that you're going to see here, make sure I'm on page one, so you're going to see this huge video section here. And then you see Reddit. So a lot of people are going to tell you um, if you see a huge video widget like this, then just move on because it's not worth it. I think it's still worth it, um, but you have to know that you really are shooting for this spot here. Um, where if it's a search term where um, you're showing, seeing all blog posts up here, no videos, I'm okay with shooting for even the five spot. Um, so like if I only see like four or five articles that are on point, I'll still go for it knowing that there's a chance that we can rank up higher than that eventually. So I'll take the risk and say, maybe we'll only end up in number, you know, number five or whatever. Um, but if it's a video, you have a huge video widget here, you have to be shooting for this number one spot because you're really not going to get any clicks at once you get past that. So it's going to be, people are going to click the videos or there's going to be people like me that don't want to watch videos and they're going to go down to the first result. They're going to click that. And then, then it's going to really tail off from there. Um, but in this case, you're seeing Reddit as the first result. So that's one you can definitely top. Um, so if we go down further than that, so how to grow a beard without looking homeless, how to grow a beard, everything I learned. That's, that's not really on point. It's got this sentence in here. Science aside, you might be wondering if a beard will make you look homeless. That's that's not necessarily on point. You'd have to look into the article to know for sure. Um, same thing here. If you do that, you're going to end up looking homeless. So this basically, this word homeless here is why these search results are showing up, but they're not necessarily on point for this. Um, you go down a little bit further here. You have this one from GQ, How to Grow a Long Beard That Never Gets Scraggly. That one's fairly on point, and that's from a, a high authority site. Um, but in this case, I would probably go for it. I'm not seeing enough here. You'd have to look into some of these posts to see if they are really on point or not. It doesn't look like they are. All I'm seeing here is you have a huge video widget, then you have a Reddit result, um, then a bunch of things that aren't really um, focused on this particular search topic. So I would probably go for this and hope for that, that, that first spot, the first text spot. All right, so the next one, how to trim beard without a trimmer. So if we look at this one here, so you got how to trim beard with scissors. Um, that's definitely on point for this. That's a way to do it without a trimmer. Then you have a Quora result uh, with only one answer. So that's a, that's a good one that you would think you could beat. Video widget, six ways to trim your beard. So again, six ways, that's, that's probably implying that there are some other ways to do it without a trimmer. Um, how to trim your beard, maybe not on point. Then you have a stack exchange. How to trim a long beard. This is GQ, but if you look at the words that like Google's pulling out without further ado, I mean, this, this has nothing to do with this particular topic. How to trim your beard with scissors. Um, that's, that's one way to do it without a trimmer, but that doesn't mean that you can't make an article that's um, a little bit wider than that. Men's Health is a huge site. How to trim a beard in eight steps. Um, but again, you look in the, the text that's highlighted here, use the trimmer without a guard. 
So that's that's definitely not on point. Again, you'd have to take the time to open these up and really find out if they're on point or not. But at first glance, um, it doesn't look like any of these results are really on point. I shouldn't say any. You have a few of them. So you have like this one here. Let's see. Was there another one? How to trim a beard without scissors I'm, I'm, or with scissors. I would typically, if I'm going to go after a keyword, I'm always going to open up the first search result and just see what it looks like. So let's just open this one up. Um, let's also open up this one from WikiHow. Let's just see what we're going against here. So again, um, use that word counter plus extension. All you do is highlight all the text. So we'll just highlight the text here, go all the way to the bottom. And you would want to look at the text and see if it's actually on point or not, or see like how much of it's on point. Um, in this case, it's 700 word article, so it's pretty short. This WikiHow one, let's see, these tend to be a lot longer, but not always. These ones have a lot of pictures, they're pretty thorough, so if this article's on point, it's going to be hard to beat. <clears throat> so, yeah, 2,500 word article. Um, so if we were to kind of look at, let's just take a quick look here. And, you know, preparation. Trimming with electric. So this is method two, trimming with electric clippers. Let's see what method three, clipper troubleshooting and maintenance. <clears throat> Trimming with scissors, so that would be an alternative way. So I don't know how much of this is really on point. I mean, trimming with scissors is obviously an alternative way. Um, but aside from that, I'm not seeing a whole lot that's on point. So you'd really have to look at the article closely to, to figure out if it is on point or not. Um, assuming that it's not too on point, this is one that I'd probably target. Um, it, it's hard to say. You really have to take the time to look into all these results. But when you see kind of Cora is the, the number two result, and you're seeing Stack Exchange down here halfway down the page, and then you're seeing most of these results aren't on point, that's usually one that you can rank for. Um, and again, we're not necessarily ranking for or shooting for number one. Um, if we can, if we think we can get in the top five, we'll usually take a chance. Um, earlier on on a site, you probably don't want to do that. You probably are trying to shoot for number one. Um, as you get further along and you start making profits and you can kind of take more risks, um, that's when you can kind of say, okay, I'm going to shoot for top five, knowing that sometimes I'm going to get higher than that. Sometimes I'm not going to get in, even get on page one, and that's okay. You're just kind of taking more risks. You're throwing more darts at the board, um, hoping that some of, them, some of them stick. So, All right, so the next one, can't grow a beard at 40. So let me switch over to my notes here. All right, so this one here. So the first result is from Healthline. So why can't I grow a beard? Um, so that one's on point. It doesn't say anything about 40, but why can't I grow a beard? Can't grow a beard at 40. It's the same thing. <clears throat> Next one, Business Insider. That's another big site. Um, not a health site, but still a big site. So some men can't grow beards and facial hair. That's fairly on point. Next one, can't grow a beard at 20, 30, 40. Um, so that's definitely somebody that's probably trying to Hit keywords similar to this, all in one article. Then you have a forum result here. Um, how to grow a beard if you can't. Can't grow a full beard. Cleveland Clinic, so a huge medical site there. Another another forum type result with Cora. Um, another article on point. So with this one in particular, even if these ones weren't on point, um, like the first one, health. This first one's from Healthline, um, and it is on point. But even if this wasn't on point, and these um, other ones weren't on point. You got a couple forums here. I would still avoid it just because Google is showing some health sites here at, at high spots like Healthline. Um, not just not just health sites. You got Business Insider as well. Um, like I said, you got Cleveland Clinic down here. So those are sites that you're not going to be able to easily compete with um, unless they're really off base, of course. But if you have Healthline in the number one spot, um, and in this case, case it is on point, you're going to have a really hard time competing. So this is one I would definitely pass on. All right, so this one, how long does it take to grow a beard? So this one's pretty simple. Um, even if it's not Healthline, but especially since it is, the featured snippet already answers the question thoroughly. So if you kind of read, you got two to four months here is what it shows up um, in large text. But if you read this, a full beard can take two to four months to grow as facial hair tends to grow between 0.3 and 0.5 millimeters every 24 hours. Um, and then this, grow, this comes out to between one third and one half an inch per month. That's about as clear as it gets. Um, there's not going to be many people that click through this because you already have the answer that you're looking for. So when that's the case, when you have a keyword like this, where the answer is already going to be answered here, or it can be answered in just a couple sentences, 
and it's already answered well, especially from a high authority site, don't go after it. Um, the only time you'd go after something like this is if, for one, you think you can get this featured snippet, that's one reason, but there's gotta be a ton of search volume. So if there's a ton of search volume for this particular search and you're confident you have a shot at this, then you can go after it um, because there's still gonna be a percentage of people that click through this and take a look at it. It's just gonna be a very, very small percentage. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next niche now. So this is um, resistance training. So we're gonna be talking about resistance bands. Um, so this first one, so how to anchor resistance bands without a door. So the first thing you see here, um, you have a video, a large video result. And then the next one, how to anchor your resistance bands at home. So how to anchor resistance bands. If you kind of look at the text here, best way to anchor resistance bands is with a dedicated wall anchor. Um, so that's that's kind of on point because that's not saying with without um, using a door. So that's on point. And then you have another video uh, widget here. There's something to keep in mind. If you have a lot of video showing up and you're you're not producing a video, you have to know that if you don't get this spot here, you're probably not going to get a lot of clicks. Um, as you scroll down here, so five ways to anchor your resistance bands, that's definitely on point. Um, then you have Amazon Ask. So if you've never seen this, it's you can treat it like a forum. So if we open this up here, it's basically like a forum result or core results. Basically, somebody asks a question and a bunch of random people answer it. Um, so typically, you would say that that's low, comp uh, low competition. You can beat it. Um, but again, you're seeing some other results that are on point. You have that. You combine that with the fact that you have these video widgets up here. This is definitely one you would pass on. Okay, so next one, how to prevent resistance bands from breaking. So again, you have a video right at the top here. And when you're doing um, health and fitness types, or when you're doing fitness, I should say more specifically, you're gonna have a lot of video results because it's just something that works really well visually. So you have that, then you have people also ask, and then you, you start going into the results here. So how to prevent resistance bands from breaking. So how to make your resistance bands uh, last longer. So that's, that's on point, resistance band safety. I think I might be on page two here. Nope, I'm not on page, page one. All right, resistance band safety. How to avoid breaking your resistance band. Why bands break. Tips to stop um, resistance bands from snapping. And and so on. These are these are all on, points. Can, on point. Can resistance bands snap easily? Do resistance bands wear out? Um, so this is definitely one where if you're seeing basically everything on page one is on point, you don't even need to check the quality of the articles to see if they're you know really really short articles or just not really thorough or whatever, because there's so many titles that are on point that you can tell right away that this is one that you should just pass on. Next one, do you need weights for resistance training? So first result um, is from Healthline. So again, you'd probably avoid it immediately. Um, but how to start lifting weights? If you look at the bolded text, you only need your body weight to provide resistance. So that's already answering the question for you. As you scroll down, you see gov.au, so that's Australia. Um, so again, another type of result you probably want to stay away from. Including free weights, weight machines, resistance bands, and your own body weight. So again, it's answering that. Very well fit. That's a huge health site or fitness site. Um, th this doesn't look like it's on point, so something to keep in mind. If you didn't have these results above, I'd probably look into a little bit further. Because um, something to keep in mind is you can beat some of these high authority sites if they if the articles aren't relevant to the search term. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but when you do have these high authority sites that do do actually answer the search query, then you don't wanna go after it. Um, emedicinehealth.com, so another big medical site that you don't really wanna be competing with. And they answer it right here. You can use your own body weight for resistance exercise and so on. You got CNET, Mayo Clinic. You definitely wanna don't wanna be competing against Mayo Clinic. So this is, this is just another one where you definitely wanna pass. So this one's interesting. So why does resistance training increase bone density? So what you're going to see with this particular one is you kind of and you kind of scroll down. So you have Harvard. So health.harvard.edu. So you have a school. Um, and you have nih.gov here. So PubMed. So these are research articles. You have Mayo Clinic, um, WebMD, unm.edu, online library. Wiley and so on, spinehealth.org. So basically Google is telling you that they are looking for um, research papers, um, you know, 
colleges or universities, you know, institutions, uh, medical institutions, things like that. And if you aren't um, creating a site of that caliber, you have zero chance of ranking for the search term. This is one that you'd absolutely want to stay away from. So next one, we just have two left here. So what do the color of resistance bands mean? So feature snippet here, what's the different colors of resistance bands mean? So obviously that one's on point, but that doesn't mean that um, you should just ignore it right away. As you go down, um, what everyone should know about the resistance bands colors. What is the difference in color resistance bands? Uh, TheraBand colors. What do the band colors mean? And quickly, again, you can tell right away that there's a lot of articles on this particular keyword already. So you're going to want to pass on it. Um, so if you did see a result like this, Pinterest.com. If you see Pinterest and they're up a little bit higher, that's definitely one that you could um, say is low competition. You can definitely beat that. The same thing. So like if these three results right here, you have Pinterest, um, azcentral.com, and then Quora. Let's say these were the ones at the top and then there was nothing that was relevant below it. Then I would absolutely go after it. Um, but I wouldn't go after it when I'm seeing all these other ones that are on point. Just to show you an example too. So so we already know Pinterest is going to be one you can beat. Quora generally is going to, I mean, you never know. You, some, sometimes these forums and sites like Quora have really, really extensive answers so they might be ranking for that purpose but typically you can be at a core result um, at a site like healthyliving.azcentral.com so if we open that up and just take a look so what you're going to see here what's the difference in color resistance bands so it's on point but you look at the article and it's literally it's very short so it's less than 500 words so this is one where, again, if these results here were the three at the top, I would go after it and I'd produce a 1,000 word article to try to top this one here. And it would probably be pretty easy to do. But because you have all these above it, this would be one that you'd pass on. All right, so the last one. So how to shorten resistance bands. So the first thing you see here on this one is a video. So just keep that in mind that you're, and then you actually have a video section down here. So you are shooting for this spot down here. So because you have all this video, so you have video, people also ask and more videos. But this particular one, if you can't get this first spot right here, it's not worth, if you don't think you can get that first spot here, it's not worth going after. So this is what you want to check from here on down. So you have how to shorten exercise tubes. It's actually the same site we just talked about. So let's open that up. Take a look here. And this is on point. So how to shorten exercise tubes. How to shorten resistance bands, same thing. And this is very, very short, probably like a couple hundred words. So 200 words. Then your next one, shortening a band, Pinterest, you know you can beat that. Three ways to use resistance bands has nothing to do with this. <clears throat> Does anyone know how to shorten resistance bands? That's on point, but it's amazon.ask. So just to show you again. So there, this is nothing. This is super easy to beat. How long should a resistance band be? Um, and if you look in here, you, you can see that they do have a section. Can you shorten resistance band? So we'll take a look at that one. But then the, the, the last couple here are not on point. As you go on to page two, if I remember correctly, there's nothing on point there either. So in this one, as you go down, you're going to eventually find a section here. Uh, where was it? Oh, right here. Can you shorten resistance bands? So basically this is their section on that particular topic. <clears throat> so it's pretty short, just a few paragraphs. So the rest of the article really is not on point. It is kind of talking about um, length and weight and things like that, but it's really not on point. That's not what the article is about. So I would say that in this particular case, I would go after this one for sure, because I think that this is really my only real competitor. And it's a super short article, so I think I could probably beat that. But again, you have this video uh, widget up here, huge video section here. So if you don't think you can get this first spot here, it's not worth going after. All right, guys, so that wraps up this one. Um, I've probably said this in the past, but keyword research and competition analysis are probably the most important steps to being successful with a niche website. So don't rush through this step, um, get it right. Just take your time, really think through the examples. Um, think through it as you're researching keywords, trying to determine which ones to target and which ones to just pass on, or at least pass on for now. Maybe you can come back to them later down when you have more authority. Um, but 
how successful you are with these steps is going to determine whether you have a lot of winners and a few losers or the other way around. Um, and if you want to be successful with a niche website, you really need more winners than losers, obviously. So, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.